Welcome to another episode of Behind the Fang Podcast. I am your host, Roth Knightley Eames Dark Raven, and I am very, very excited to uh, be able to talk to this gentleman, uh, someone I've held in a high regard for quite a long time. Uh, my guest this week is our Hyperion over on Eames. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Ross. It's a pleasure to be here. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and and uh, you know let uh, the people of Progeny know you know just exactly who Oberon is. Um, I I'll be honest with you, uh, not too many people in Progeny make me nervous. But uh, whenever your name pops up with the teleport, I'm like, uh oh. So <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's never been a bad experience, but it's like, oh, this is the guy, you know. So um, it's 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 a pleasure. I I think back to. Uh, gosh, my early times in progeny where you and I might have interacted when you were, uh, you know, a diabolic Oberon. And it was just small little uh, exchanges we had done, but I always found them enjoyable. So, uh, again, I'm very excited. Thank you so much. Um, you're, you're most welcome. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to uh, speak to you and the community. And on behalf of our source, Lachelle, I want to uh, thank him personally for all of the hard work that he's doing. I'd also like to thank the entire Di- Diabolic team. We are a team. There is no doubt about it. Many of the people who have been in this position in the system also worked as a team in the past. Uh, I have no bad things to say about any of them because they did good as well as aggravated a few. But, hey, that's life. I look back at, uh, like, if you go to Diabolic Park, you'll see the names of all the uh, Diabolics past and present there at the uh, pavilion, and I I have the utmost respect for every single one of them. I, I totally get where you're coming from. What I would like to do, is uh, we're going to basically we're going to go through the same questions I ask everybody else and we're going to get to know you know your backstory and where you came from and I'm excited to hear it uh first and foremost we we go through a section called who's your daddy how did you come into progeny tell us about your experience uh you know coming in your embrace everything well, let's see. Uh, in in order to uh, give you that backstory, I'll have to go back to the very beginning. Uh, I mean, originally in how I got into Second Life, and that was we used to play in Yuru, uh, and I had a relto upon which I was Oberon names at that time as well. Uh, I was dragged kicking and screaming into Second Life after Yuru was dis- discontinued by the game producers. At that moment in time, I didn't know what a Linden was, what a Prim was. I had no clue. Anyway, to make a very long story short, Ledge, who was my partner in real life as well as in Second Life, came in and found the other system that people use uh, (laughs) and got me sucked into bloodlines. Mm -hmm. And as the head of bloodlines, I became the sage of uh, the Raven's Claw clan. Uh, and during that time, uh, when Raven's Claw was developing, uh, we met this vampire called Fidesz. Fidesz and I, of course, had our little to do's. Uh, some were good, some were bad, but she decided to go off on her own. After about oh, two or three weeks, she uh, came to me and she said, I found this magnificent, wonderful system. I said, Okay, uh, tell me about it. And she gave me about a 45-minute dissertation on what progeny was and what uh, Lachille had, uh, was trying to create because of his uh, distaste for some of the other systems that exist. And I said, okay, let's give it a whirl. And Fidesz is the one who actually brought me into progeny. The, Very cool. Yeah, the embrace was uh, quite interesting. And at that time, we got involved with a number of other uh, clans, and uh, I was offered the position of Arch. And during that time, there was an Arch Council that was held in the Ravensclaw Castle at that time on Gowers, uh, where the other Arches 
voted with Lachelle as to whether or not I would be allowed to join and bring the might of the Ravensclaw clan into progeny. And that's basically how it started. It was fun. We enjoyed it. It was a lot of good interaction. Uh, so when you came into progeny, uh, talk to us about your uh, first blood, your first feeding, you know, or, or your first uh, hunt. You know, how did that happen? Where you know, tell us, go through the steps of that one for us. Well, my first hunt, actually, it wasn't much of a hunt. <laughs> uh, it was my turning a large number of Ravensclaw vampires into Ravens, into progeny uh, vampires. Mm -hmm. uh, and so feeding wasn't so much an issue. Uh, not for me at that point in time. Uh, but over the course of time, we had turned... Um, Lord, I think there are maybe, I think, 12 or 15 Gen 1s in Raven's Claw that were sired by me. Uh, and then everybody else has been sired by all of the other people within Raven's Claw at that point in time. Uh, so the hunt was usually close to home. Uh, we had many grand parties. Uh, Super Dexing was one of my lieutenants. He was on my council in Raven's Claw, Saint. Uh, Questy, he was also my, uh, uh, it was, he was the head of many services <laughs> and he was a great asset to Raven's Claw and, uh, we all wound up, uh, coming into progeny together because we thoroughly liked the concept, uh, that Lachelle had put forth, which was basically that the system was free to play, uh, cause the hub was free and it will always remain free. And the role play was something that we could develop on our own. And we did develop many different uh, <laughs> role play actions. Uh, some things which many people didn't like. Some things which a lot of people did like. I mean, there are those politics out there that initially started the system and helped it grow. Well, I, I, I guess along with that, I guess I would have to ask you, you're talking about, you know, the different parts of role play and, and how things grew. What would you say was your favorite? You can you pinpoint down one favorite thing that you've done or, or a couple of favorite things you've done during that time that helped grow the system? Well, it's not just one thing that is my favorite because the interaction of all the people who are involved in progeny is what gives me the enjoyment. I mean, uh, the politics I find is interesting, but my one policy is that when people start doing things that are distasteful to other factions within the system, uh, or they do something wrong, I think you may have noticed, and many of you may have noticed, that through my notices that I send out, I never name people as being bad, good, or indifferent, but I do give notice that, well, so-and-so has done something, so therefore I have to come up with a statement to the effect that they will know who they are when I make the statement, but, right. but I don't have to out them. And, and that's that's the in my opinion that's the way it should be, you know. If you, as long as you, the message gets across, you know, serve, you know, justice is done, and no one has to get in an uproar. And and I think you handle things very well when it comes to that and many other aspects of progeny. Well, the one thing that I can say is that, and I want everybody out there to know this, is that when it comes to system issues. Uh, problems that crop up with the technology. Uh, I am more than willing to help anybody out. It's it's Raid, Bazaar, uh, all the rest of them in the past who have been seen from the outside as being a royal pain in where I sit. Uh, but in reality, they're not. And uh, I'm more than willing to discuss things with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing that I do not like is I do not like yes men <laughs> or yes women. Gotcha. It's, it's, it's uh, I want people to tell me, okay, I think you're doing something wrong, but I want them to tell me with respect because I will give the same respect to them that they give to me. And trust me, the dust button ain't far away. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many times where, 
uh, I've sat here and I've said to uh, my wife Rose or other people in, in my clan, I've said, you know, I'm sure that every time that my name pops up in Oberon's box, I'm sure he's going, oh, Jesus, not again. Because I know that I, there for a long time, I was in your box almost every other day saying, hey, I, this is how I think about this. And this is what I think about that. And I always felt I was a thorn in your side. But you've never once, no matter how upset I was, uh, and I tried to be as respectful as possible, never once did you ever treat me with disrespect. Never once did you ever talk down to me. And I just, at the end of our conversation, I was like, okay. You know, and, and my and that's just another step up in, in my respect for this guy. And, but and, and to this day, I'm still nervous when I talk to you. I don't get it. <laughs> but, <laughs> no need to be nervous. <laughs> I don't bite much. <laughs> Not hard. <laughs> <laughs> but something I wanted to talk about on this podcast was a, a favorite interaction of mine with you from years ago. And I still have the note card. Uh, in my in my inventory because I copied it from Progeny Chat, and uh, it was when I was just a a delegate of of the house I was in. I was very young in the system, not even a year into the system, and uh, we me and a group of people from my house were playing on the truth ball, and a question came up about uh, cooking with chocolate, and one of my vampires said, "I and we're typing by the way." And he had said, I can't cook with chocolate. I'll go into a diabolic coma. <laughs> well, instantly, you know, I get in progeny chat and I'm like, hey, you know, I, I don't understand why, you know, y'all, why the diabolics put my boy in, in, in a diabolic coma just for cooking with chocolate and just being just, you know, funny guy. And the first one to respond was you. And all you said was blinks. <laughs> and my, everyone in my house just just lost it. We we're all laughing, and because we all said it would be great if Oberon responded to this, and you were the first one. And, <laughs> and we just, I I think back to that moment of of how funny that was, and that was I think that was probably our first air quote interaction with you. And and I don't know if you recall that, but we I still think about that five years later. <laughs> and I, I, I love it. I love it. Uh, the good times. Yes. And we're still good times. We're we still are. Good times. I, I love how, and I don't mean to offend anybody. If I do, I apologize. But ever since you have become a Pyrian, I've definitely seen the system moving forward. Because I've said that there for the longest time, the system was stagnant. Um, not a lot of, you know, air quote, improvements going on or or progress and it just seemed like you came in you became a Pyrian, and boom you just start seeing progress right and left and you know we've seen the resire come back and we've uh you know just uh yesterday we, we got uh, an update on the huds which is great uh i know people are looking forward to the lichens coming out soon uh and along with the new vampire huds i guess what i where i'm getting at is where, how did you come into with the becoming a Pyrian and say, okay, this is how we're going to do things. This is how we're going to get the ball rolling. Let's do it. Let me put it this way. This is Lachelle's baby. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Progeny belongs to him. 100%. Part of what happened over the course of time is that the uh, politics of the system were starting to wear him down. Every time he logged in, he was inundated with... This one said this, and that one did that, and this one did this, and this one did that. So that in his attempt to try and be fair with everybody, his time got sucked up, and he couldn't continue with development. So in on my conversations with him, uh, Lachelle decided that it would be best if he stepped back from the politics of the system, and the community aspects of the system that were driving him crazy and just work on development. So by him stepping back and putting that on my plate and my taking all of that redundancy away from him and working with the team that we've developed in the Diabolic Conclave. Uh, and this is something about the Conclave that everybody needs to know is, yes, we have greater Diabolics. And yes, we have Cambians, but in all honesty, 
I treat each one of those individuals in the diabolic conclave as equals. When a question comes up about should we do this or should we do that, um, the first thing I do is I put it out in our conclave chat and I ask for input. They don't always agree with me. I don't always agree with them, but we talk it through and we make our decisions. And that's the concept of the team and how the team works together. Um, people have said to me, well, why did you bring Antonia in? Oh my God, we can't stand her. She's a megalomaniac. And I go, uh, no. I says, Antonia is on the other side of the world from me. I'm in Seattle, Washington, second lifetime. Antonia is in the United Kingdom. She works as a diabolic to take care of filling in some of what I cannot do and what the other diabolics who live on this side of the world cannot accomplish. They're there to answer questions and to help the people as best they can. Mm -hmm. um, other people have, have told me that my choice of Parthenia was just absolutely ridiculous. Well, guess what, gang? Parth does a lot more behind the scenes than anybody could ever imagine. Uh, same goes for Lucifer. And, and Cassie, God bless her, she is, she is uh, uh, the liaison to the Latin-speaking community. Uh, she does more behind the scenes than anybody will ever understand. Uh, I see this on a daily basis. Uh, I get up in the mornings at my time, 0430. First thing I do is I check with Conclave chats. I may not say anything, but I've read them. It gives me an opportunity to think about things. And then when I get back to my desk in the afternoons, I can sit down and I can start figuring out, OK, what do we do? Because X, Y and Z are being B, D and D. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and it's 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 a wonderful quest to uh, watch the system develop uh, the role play that we wish to get into place, and just so everybody understands what's going on with the sim. And I thank Arch Ledge for his architectural ability and his building for what he's done so far. And the concepts are all coming from the entire diabolic team to him in order to build this. The underground is the domain of the vampires. The above ground, the surface, is going to be the domain of the lichens. Now, in keeping this as two separate cultures, yet they'll be able to blend with each other. Because one of the things I'm considering, and we haven't decided yet, within the guidelines of the role play, is making the tavern, the uh, Lycan Tavern, to be a neutral zone where vampires are welcome to come. And on, by the same token, making the arena an area where the Lycans are welcome to come. Now, the fights that can exist on the sim, I mean, the Ravage is, is a wonderful idea. Lord Babu is the one who came up with how to make this work, and he is working on developing it out even further. Uh, and he's working with the two Diabolics in charge of that aspect of the system. I'm basically an overseer. And when people come to me with an idea, such as you did yourself with the Diabolic Park, uh, you asked me, is this something that should be done or could be done? And I told, and, and I believe my response was, go for it. Run with it. Mm -hmm. And you have made it into a wonderful area to go to. Uh, now, in the future, I hope that uh, we can bring you and the Diabolic Park closer to the Progeny Sims, uh, which are also, there are plans for expansion there, which I'll go into at a later date. No, I, I I remember coming to you about uh, Diabolic Park, and as you know, in my mind I'm going, eh, I don't see it happening. But you know, I'm I'm always the type to to say you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. And I was very surprised when you said go for it, and I think I had it up and ready to go within 48 hours. And I said, hey, come look, come look, come look. You came over and uh, you said you liked it, and you said let's do it. And and I I am very appreciative that uh, you. Uh, let that happen and, and made that part of progeny uh, as far as a progeny land and 
we're trying our best uh, as far as the team over there to try to figure out different ways to utilize that park other than just the uh, you know come over and dance on Saturday nights you know so we're trying to think of other ways to uh, make that useful and hopefully down the road I'll get more input from others as well uh, but I, I am thankful that you uh, did see value in, in what I was trying to do. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, the aspect of the renegades in the system who deserve equal respect, just like the GCSC, uh, the Council of Houses, uh, the Arch Conclave and all the rest. Um, I mean, you are an equal part of the system in my mind. Uh, which is one of the reasons why my instructions to the Scribes Guild was to make sure that every single announcement that goes out goes out in uh, the three main groups, of which Progeny Renegades is one of the main groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thank you for bringing that to light for me as well, because your uh, reasoning for becoming Renegade, I completely understand. Uh, the... The, the GCSE has a very large part to do with the system, and I hope to see everything grow. I don't see that being an issue, period. I, you know, my reasons for going Renegade uh, may not be the same as, let's say, uh, Sovereign Premies or anyone else. Um, but I, I love that you have seen that, uh, you know, we are not the red <laughs> stepchildren of the system. Um, and that we do get that respect. And, you know, two years ago, three years ago, this was not a thing. Renegades were shunned. And, uh, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm very uh, glad that you do see, you know, where we come from as renegades. And, 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 I'm sh and I, I don't know if I can speak on behalf of all the renegades, but I want to say thank you for that. <laughs> so um, I'm going to kind of skip this, the, the, what we normally do is the last question, because I'm going to ask you this, and I don't even know if you can answer this, but this is my try. If, if you can say anything, is there anything in development for the future of Progeny that nobody in the realm, other than, of course, probably the Diabolics and, and our source, know about? And if there is, can you... Give us a little taste. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it this way. There are quite a few things in development. Uh, there is a very large to-do list. Um, and that to-do list is going to remain a state secret. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> tried. Tried. Yes. But no, there's there. Uh, it it part of the intrigue of the game and the system and the community is is uh, listening to what the community really wants, and we all do listen and we all do discuss, and we try to give the community what is going to benefit them and what they're going to enjoy doing the most. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is why uh, one of my favorite expressions with all of this is, we're not going to carve it in electronic rock. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so not too many people out there get to hear the, the appearance voice. So is there anything that you want to tell them here as we uh, wrap up the podcast for today? Anything that you'd like to leave them with? Any words of wisdom? Well, what I'd like to leave the entire community with is the amount of appreciation I have for everybody's efforts. Uh, everybody who has something to say to me, I do listen. Uh, sometimes I don't respond very quickly because it's a little difficult when you've got a hundred windows open. Mm -hmm. But uh, I appreciate everything everybody is doing for the system. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all out there. But I want everybody to have a good time. That's what it's all about. So try not to get under each other's skin, unless, of course, you're bang-banging. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> this, is this is a community, and the community has been developing for many, many years. Uh, the system is huge. There are people out there who uh, have... Again, I mean, I've had people come out to me in 
say hello who were quaking in their boots. And that's not necessary. Uh, it's, it's, if you have something you'd like to say to me or share with me, please do. Uh, and right now I have, uh, a meowling cat that would like to have his say, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, remember, be good to each other, have fun, uh, get involved. Uh, don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, that's what we're here for. And every one of the diabolics are more than willing to listen to what you have to say. And if you think someone's treated you unfairly, feel free to contact me. But I also want everybody to keep in mind that the archers are extremely important in this system. Uh, sometimes they feel like they are, uh, as to use a term you use, the uh, redheaded <laughs> children of the system, but they're not. They are an integral part of the system and very important. And I am working very hard to see that they can become a really great team and work well together in order to develop the system and the role plays that they wish to participate in. Uh, remember, we're a bunch of uh, independent people trying to be dependent upon each other. And again, my thanks to Lachelle for all of the work that he's doing behind the scenes. Uh, many of you are probably not quite aware of the amount of time that it takes to code just a very simple change in the system. And I'm not going to get into the resire device because that has been a bone of contention for many years. But uh, we are working on the issues that are coming up with that and we're trying to resolve them. That happens to be our main focal point at the moment. Uh, that and this new HUD development and the turnout of the HUD. So again, everybody, have a great night. Yeah, thank you very much, Aperion Oberon, for being on the Behind the Fang podcast. It has been my pleasure. Thank you so much. And with us wrapping up the podcast here, I want to remind you all that if you would like to hear from somebody and have them here on the podcast, by all means... You can find me in the Progeny group. I am Roth Knightley Eames Darkraven, or you can go by my username, Roth Knightley. And by all means, send me your suggestions of who you would like for us to have here on the podcast. Uh, again, I'm Roth Knightley Eames Darkraven. Thank you again very much, Akari and Oberon, and we are out of here. Y'all have a great rest of your day. <laughs>